All right. Hello, everybody, and happy Wednesday. Um, this is Miss Scrippa. I just, I know you guys finished watching the first video about the mice um, and answering some questions. I just want to go over a couple things to make sure that we're on the same page. Um, and then I'm going to give you guys some important instruction about the next part of the assignment. So please watch until the end because um, I'm going to help you guys with that simulation that you're going to do afterwards. Um, so that video, it kind of assumes that you already know a lot um, because um, they kind of throw around a lot of these vocabulary words but never really explain them. So I want to be sure, I know you guys have probably heard a lot of these words before, but I want to make sure that we're all on the same page with them. Um, so the first word that they use a lot is natural selection. You've probably heard it before and learned about it before, um, but because we're going to focus on it for the next couple of days, I want to be sure that we have a good understanding. So natural selection, you've probably heard um, survival of the fittest before. Um, but the idea is that organisms that have helpful traits, right? Sometimes those helpful traits are called adaptations. Um, organisms that have good traits, they tend to live longer and uh, reproduce more than traits that, or than organisms that don't have those helpful traits, right? So if you have good adaptations, it means you live longer, um, meaning, you know, maybe you're not eaten by that predator, maybe you don't have that disease, um, but whatever that good trait is, it helps you live longer. Um, in the wild, a lot of times, if you're an animal or a plant, if you live longer, that also means that you reproduce more. Right, and because those helpful traits tend to be genetic, tend to be in their DNA, um, those good traits are going to be passed on to the next generation, right? Those parents are passing on some of their DNA to each of their babies. So that's the idea. Um, you watched an example with the mice, right? So if you think about those really dark rocks, those lava rocks, um, in that case, the darker mice would have the helpful trait, right? So the darker mice would be able to survive longer, probably on average, right? Because the hawks and the snakes that are all trying to eat them can't see them as easily. Um, so they're able to hide better so they can live longer, right? So those dark mice live longer because they're not eaten. Um, because they live longer, they have more little mouse babies, um, at least some of which will also have that dark trait. So that trait is going to keep getting passed on. Um, and over time, it's going to be more and more common. Um, so here's another example. I'm sorry if the picture is blurry when I made it big. Um, but here's another kind of basic example is, um, maybe certain types of crows or birds prefer certain bugs or certain colors of bugs. Um, so if they prefer green beetles for whatever reason, right, over time, this population on the branch, there are going to be more and more of those orange ones that aren't being eaten as much. Um, so those orange ones are going to survive longer. They're going to have more babies. Um, and over time, you're going to see that this population on the branch is going to have much more orange bugs than green bugs. Um, the second and last word that we're going to go over is evolution. Um, and I think there's a lot of misconceptions with this word. Um, but all evolution is, is the change in a population over time. Um, and so a lot of times people think that we're talking about new species being formed, or we're talking about like millions and millions of years ago with the dinosaurs. Um, and certainly those are both true. Those can be examples of evolution. Um, but you can also have very, very small scale evolution. So evolution can also just be, um, say, the fact that humans have gotten a lot taller in the last 200 years, right? So we didn't make a new human species or anything like that. But in just that short amount of time, um, the population of humans on Earth has got quite a bit taller, um, partially due to genetics and also partially due to our, our diet and the way that we've been farming. Um, so again, these can be small changes. They don't always have to be big changes. Um, and the second thing I want us to keep in mind is we're talking about a population or a group of organisms, right? So a group of plants or a group of animals. Um, we're not talking about an individual. So like you as yourself could not evolve, right? I cannot evolve. I'm Miss Scrippa. I've already got all the traits I'm going to have, right? I look like what I'm going to look like. That's not really going to change too much. Right? My DNA isn't going to magically change um, over time, so I can't really change. Right, I, That's already kind of set in stone for me for the most part, but the population could change. So we could talk about um, the population of Springfield as a whole. We could look at 
um, what Springfield used to be like in terms of whatever kind of trait you want. It could be in terms of health um, or height or whatever it might be. And then we can look at how that population changes in the future and why maybe those changes happen. All right, so um, the second part of this um, lesson that you guys are going to be doing today is simulation. Um, and it's actually very, very quick. It should only take about two minutes. Um, so if you're here, you're going to take this link. I'm going to copy this link into Google. Um, please do use Google. Um, this is going to the same thing. I just want to be sure. Yep. Please do use Google Chrome for this just because I'm going to show you guys um, something that you might have to work around. So um, sometimes student computers get a little weird with Adobe Flash. So I'm just going to show you guys how to fix that. Um, you might have opened this website and some of you might have like a gray screen that has a puzzle piece in the middle. Um, it's not on my screen, but it might happen to you. So if you have that gray screen with the puzzle piece, um, I believe it says click here to enable Adobe Flash. You're going to click on that puzzle piece. And then up in the top corner, um, it'll ask you to allow Adobe Flash. So then you would hit allow. All right. So if you have that, if it says click to enable Adobe Flash, make sure you click it and then hit allow. That way you can see the full website. Um, occasionally, more rarely, students get something that says Adobe Flash Player is blocked. All right, so now I'm going to show you what to do if it's blocked. Um, you do not need to follow along with the next couple of clicks unless it says that. So if it says that it's blocked on your screen, you're going to go up to the top right corner um, where my mouse is wiggling up here, um, and you should see three dots. It's right under the X button. You're going to click those three dots. And you're going to go all the way down towards the bottom where it says settings. It's the third from the bottom. You're going to press settings. And again, this is only if your Adobe is blocked. Um, and then you're going to scroll a little bit more than halfway down. You might need to keep going. But you'll see a tab that says privacy and security. And at the bottom of that, you should see site settings. All right. You're going to click site settings. And at the very bottom, I have certain websites that it's already tried to block or unblock. Um, but at the very bottom, you should see something where it says flash. It'll have a piece of a puzzle piece. All right. Um, you're going to hit the arrow. And you're going to be sure that it's turned on up here where it says ask first. All right. If it's blocked, it's probably like this. All right. But if you want to unblock it, you're just going to click it so that it's blue. And this is ask first. So then if you go back, it should um, work on your website. All right. Um, but that's just if you guys are having problems with the website. Um, if you are having problems with the website, please let me know so I can help you out. All right. But ultimately, you should get your screen to look like mine. All right. And I'm just going to show you what to click to get to the lab um, and how the lab works. So you're going to click this very last circle, the one, the most on the right with the bird that says a bird's eye view of natural selection. All right. Um, and you guys can click through here, but the idea is we're going to watch a population change over time. Um, we're going to look at some bugs rather than mice. We're going to look at some moths. Um, and it's like a game where you're going to be a bird. You're going to be the predator. Um, and you're going to see how the, how that's affecting the bugs over time. So at the start of the simulation, um, you guys are going to see that half of the bugs are going to be light. They're almost a white color. And then half of them will be dark. They're a really dark gray. All right. Um, and you're going to look at how um, those things change. So we're going to hit the arrow. All right. Um, and we're going to click again. So you guys are going to do two experiments. Um, you're going to do one first and then the other. All right, so I'm going to click the light forest first. This is going to be a forest where the trees are a really light color. So if you think about like those white birch trees, they, they have the bark on the outside. It almost looks like paper that you can rip off. I don't know if you've seen those. Um, but we're going to be looking at a bird that's hunting for food in that forest first. You're going to click that left circle. All right, and with the mouse of your computer, you can move it around. Um, but you have one minute, it's going to time you, and you're going to eat as many bugs as you can find as fast as you can. And you're going to 
eat them by clicking on them right over them. So this is how it's going to work. You're going to find as many as you can as fast as you can. All right. Um, I'm not going to keep going, but um, for your data, please make sure you're playing for the full minute so that you get good data. Um, I'm going to let you guys do it on your own. Um, but at the very, very end of that one minute, um, you should see these percentages at the bottom where it says that there is 54% of the moths are lighter, 46% of the moths are darker, and so on and so forth. So you can continue to click if you want to. It makes all sorts of good sound effects. All right, but ultimately these two numbers at the bottom that are in red are what you guys are going to write down um, in your table. So for example, it says your forest started with 50% light moths and 50% dark. Now there are 57% light moths and 43% dark. All right, um, you're then going to go back and you're going to do the other one. All right, so you'll need to go back on your own and do the dark forest as well. Um, but please do the light and the dark to take your data. But the idea is you're a bird, right? Birds need loads of food to survive. Um, so you're going to see if you can get enough food for your bird and watch what happens to the population of the bugs. All right, so when you get those numbers, you're going to write them here. So we did the light forest, for example, right? And I think at the end I had something like 57% light moths and 43% dark moths, something like that. You'll have your own numbers, right? When you go back and do the dark forest, you're going to write in your numbers on that second row of the table as well. Um, and then you're going to answer four questions just about what happened and why did that happen? Why did that change occur? All right. Um, please let me know if you guys need any help today. I'll be on my email. Um, I also always have my office hours. They're written in, in the description next to this video if you forget when they are. All right. But otherwise, have a good day. Um, and I hope you guys are not dying too much in this heat outside. I know I've been stuck indoors for a lot of it.